It's, we're trying to do new tricks this year that we haven't done before. Um, I'm Emmanuel Boss. I'm going to teach you the first up, up till the uh, uh, spring break. And then Lee Carr Boss will teach the second module, which is chemistry. The two modules are completely independent. Even though the grades are averaged at the end, each module is independent. So what you do with me is what you do with me. What you do with Lee is what you do with Lee. It's separate. Okay? I know it's kind of confusing, but and the two the two halves have very different styles, different way of doing the labs, different way of doing things. So just assume you're taking two different classes. That would be the best way to think about it. So by the time you learn my what I like to do, <laughs> get confused again, you'll have to learn your ways. Um, we have behind you two TAs for the class, Kerry Fien and Marina van der Ebb. Both of them took this class when they were undergraduates here. They're now graduate student. One is a graduate student at Marine Science Carries, and Marina is, is doing the MST, the uh, Master in Science and Teaching uh, at the university. And my lab manager is Jim Loftin, behind you, who's also going to be in the lab. So they're all here. Um, we're going to meet here, hopefully every week, between 12, 10, and 1, except for next week. So next week we have no class. It's Martin Luther King Day. But the homeworks are always due by noon of the next Monday. So your homework for that you're going to get this week are due next Monday by noon. You can submit them before and I strongly advise you, particularly with the first homework, to start today. To start as soon as you can because it takes time and I require a lot. And you can ask students from previous classes. It's a, it's a lot of work. Hopefully not busy work and you'll learn something in the process. But uh, it's don't wait until Sunday to start emailing me, I don't understand, you know, I have a problem with this or whatever. Um, there's an email to send the homework to. So the homeworks have to be typed or in the least scanned and sent to this, um, to this address, sms204.umain at gmail.com. And then they'll be emailed back to you with the grade on. So we, what we do is we open them in Adobe. We write comments on it and, and the letters and the grades and then send it back to you, the numerical grades. Yes? Is there a particular um, word processor that you'd like us to use? You use whatever you want, whichever one you like. But it's really useful if you PDF it okay. because we might not have that software. So save it as a PDF and send it to us. Um, if you need any assistance, send me an email. Or the, or the, or the, I mean, you could do the same with the, with the, uh, I don't have the address here, uh, the TAs, but send me and I'll probably send you to the TA or myself. And there's no specific time to get together with me, but I, I'm available. If I'm not available, a TA is available. We'll make, we'll make it work for you. Guys, here are hands out. Uh, do you have a class every time just before that you cannot make it at 2 ten, at 12.10? Uh, well, we okay. Yeah, it, it changed. <laughs> it changed recently. Thanks. Sorry about it. Thank you. There you go. There you go. You're welcome. Sorry, guys. It changed on Main Street recently when we discovered that there's room here. Come in. So we went. We, we just went through uh, the basic mechanics of our class. Well, there's room for everybody, but it's going to be a little bit crowded. So there's there's another chair over there. Second. So I'm Emmanuel Boss, and I'm going to teach you for the first seven weeks of the class. Um, I forgot to say, the class is two credits, and every year students complain that it's not enough relative to the work you do. Think about it the other way around. It's a great deal. You don't pay that much, and you get, you know, for, for getting a lot. Um, we're <laughs> meeting here every week at noon, um, at no, uh, 12, 10 to 1. Uh, as I told some students, cannot make it at, during that time, and that's why I'm wearing this thing on me, so that uh, we're recording the class and they can watch it after. Uh, and hopefully I, I will be even able to put links to the videos uh, on the website of the class. The website of the class is the last thing on this list, and everything is there. So we give you a handout for homework, but you forgot them. You can find the homeworks there. We'll give you a link there. We'll give you data sets there. So today, each, one, each group is going to collect data, but the homework is on everybody's data, some of the homework. So then you'll have access to all these data, uh, all this data on, on the web. It's all there. Um, it's all going to be there by the end of the day today. 
So, um, and links, and there's movies to watch because you'll have to answer questions about those movies in your homework. So all the links are here. And if you have a problem, tell us. You can, if you cannot watch it on your own computer, we can set up a computer for you to watch it. Um, so what's important with the homework is that you think, start working on it today, figure out everything is smooth, you know exactly how you go about it, all is good, or tomorrow. And then if you see that there's a problem, don't call us Sunday night at midnight. Yeah, I, cannot, I don't know how to do this. Uh, it's not working for me. I cannot watch the movie because then it's a bit late. What I've done in previous years, as the two TAs that are here that have taken the class can attest, is I do allow for resubmission of homework up to half the point you lost. So if you submit late, you lose 10 points automatically. If you submit after I publish the homework, the week after, publish the solutions, then you, 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 get, um, you get zero for not submitting, but you can get up to 50 points by resubmitting after I publish the solution. You cannot cut and paste my solution into your answer. It has to be in your own words. And I can tell if you cut and paste. It's very easy. <laughs> so, so it has to be in your own words. It has to be your own work. But I allow resubmission up to half the, up to half the point you lost. Um, so if you get 50 and then 100 after you resubmit, you can get 75. And so, and surprisingly enough, very few students take me up on it every day, every year, which is surprising, but I guess uh, it's what it is. Any questions? Okay, so we'll jump straight into the material. Oh, okay. Ah, before we jump, we have, we have a few issues. Uh, as it is now, we have 16 students in session one, 15 in session two, and five in session three. So what I need from you guys is volunteers. I need four from session one and three from session two to move into session three. And I know exactly who can do it and who cannot. So if you don't want us to volunteer you, it would really help if some of you are willing to move from, let's start, from session one, this session, the one from two to four. Anybody willing to move to six to eight? No names? Before I have to start choosing names? You're making it hard on me. Anybody from two to four not minding doing six to eight? Um, you can? Excellent. You're in session two, so that's, that's great help. And your name is? Uh, Margaret Mahoney. Can I board this for a second? Excellent. So now I need only two more. I need two more from that session, section two to section three. Okay, so let's start with section one. Section one, uh, Amanda Victoria Cherist. I can't. You cannot, because according to Jody, you can. Okay, that's okay. Ian Andrew, hey, who's that? Can you? Uh, from where to where? From section one to section three. So, I, so it's too big of a. Okay. Kelsey Garrett Moon. Yeah, I can. You can? Thank you. <laughs> I know, we don't want to. Um, Samira May. I can from um, the second one. What's your name? Julia Magnavoffen. Julia. <laughs> Thank you very much. Session three. We need one more from session two and three more from session one. Uh, where was I? Uh, uh, Kelsey, uh, Samira? To what? Please. Well, you can? Excellent. Okay, so who are you? Give me names. Names. McKinsey Thompson, great. Session one. Uh, Grace Wisey. Grace Wisey, excellent. Session one and Brianna. Brianna, I know you. Uh, Brianna, excellent. And believe me, it's going to be a fun session. The third one. 
By then we figure everything out, everything works well, it goes much faster. So we're done with the people from session one to session three. Session two, I need one more person. Uh, we'll go from the end, how about that? Dylan Turner. Yes? yes? Yeah. It's going to be fun, promise you. Okay, so all of you, um, so I have uh, Julianne, I have Dylan, and I have Margaret. For section two, for section one, I have Amanda, Kelsey, uh, McKinsey, Grace, and Brianna. Please go after the class to uh, Jody so she changes you on the... Okay, I can give you the, your name, but it, it will be faster that way. Um, so she changes you uh, in terms of the section. But come today to section three. The lab is the same building, just the other side, upstairs. I don't know if you, those of you have never been there, the fourth floor. Okay? And the way it works in the lab, you're going to be dividing yourself into small groups of three, since there are going to be 12, 12, and 12. Um, and then you're going to go around doing different activities. Uh, there's a quiz at the end. You do it individually. You do it as a group. It doesn't count for your grade. But the winning group of all the groups can get pizza. I mean, will get pizza. So there's a little competition going. You'll see. Um, so yeah, so you have, you have an opportunity to get pizza if you listen in class and, 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 and listen in the lab. Okay, so the class philosophy. Um, the idea here is that physics and chemistry are needed to understand the environment organisms experience. Many of you are in marine science because you care about marine organism. Uh, and so knowing the physics of the marine environment and the chemistry is useful uh, for that. So what we hope is that you learn some basic concept, gain and hand experience. In the lab, you're going to be getting your hands wet, literally, uh, and learn some new skills and show up an old one, you're going to do graphs, you're going to, yes, yes, sorry, sorry, you're welcome. Uh, and you're not competing with each other. I don't um, curve. So whatever you get doesn't influence what anybody else gets in the class. So help each other, study together, you know, go make a dinner together, solve the, you can do the homework together, just individual. I want individual homeworks in your own individual words. I don't want copies of homework but to work together. It's much more fun. Um, what are the skills we're talking about? Displaying data, analyzing data. You're going to do statistics of data, relate different data, plot one thing versus something else. Understand something about reporting and computing uncertainties in data. How do we decide what error bars to put on? How do we even plot error bars? You'll have to learn that. Uh, improve the ability to convert unit. We're going to do a lot of exercise of conversion unit until we feel that you guys have that skill hammered in, because it's important. Uh, you'll work in groups. You'll learn to work in groups if you have never done it before. And we hope you'll, in terms of knowledge, you'll understand fluids and what it means to live in a fluid environment. Because we're not, when we're in, a, in air, but it's not the same as in water. Um, so what are the expectations? Listen and interact in class. If you don't slow me with questions, I'm going to charge as if I think you understand everything I say. And believe me, if you have a question, everybody else says they just feel uncomfortable asking. So don't be shy. Come see me or a TA. If you need any help, drop an email anytime you want. Uh, and you'll get an answer. I'm usually pretty good in answering emails, uh, at least in the same day for sure, if not in a few minutes after. Uh, homework, you can work in groups, hand in individual work, and there's a final exam. The final exam will be at the time of the class, the last day before the break. We'll still have a lab afterwards, but the exam will be at that. So in six weeks, there'll be an exam on this part of the class. Um, class notes are online. So you already have notes for, there's no textbook for this class. And the, the text is what I post online. I don't want you to have to buy a $100 book. There's no need for that, but I want you to read the material that I post. So, in, and that's why I also contacted you a week ago, because I thought it'd be great for you to have the time to start assimilating that material before you come, those of you who want to. I mean, obviously, you don't require to do anything in, in your break. But look at that material for every week. Come after you read the material that's posted. It's going to make the class much easier for you to understand. Okay? Uh, and it's all there.
and I tested the link. If a link doesn't work for you, fire an email. Tell me I can't open the whatever, and we'll work on that. Uh, what is physics? Physics is the science of matter, energy, space, and time. Uh, it's the word that derived from Greek, where it means nature or natural thing, and it's really the study of how nature, what, what's in nature, how nature works. It answers a question about the universe and, and how things interact within this universe. And that's all it can do. It cannot answer things that are not part of that. Uh, so let's think about what about the physical environment we need in order to, um, that might affect the organism we care about. So long time ago, I met this marine chemist, a uh, TV famous um, uh, oceanographer, for whom biology had four purposes. I mean, was doing four actions. Every, everything we think about biology does. Reprodu reproduction which for some means finding a mate. There are organisms that don't need to find a mate to reproduce, they just divide, but some do. You need to get energy from the outside, so you need to feed, you need to be able to get access to food. You have to get rid of waste product, because waste products that are generated in our bodies as well as, as by other organisms are toxic to them. So you need to be able to get rid of that, and you have to be able to avoid being eaten. So avoiding that something consumes you as its, as its energy. So what I'd like you to do is to think about a marine organism and take a few minutes now, maybe three minutes, for this organism to provide one physical characteristic about the ocean. So physical characteristic can be temperature, salinity, currents, um, viscosity, which may affect each one of these things for your organism. Okay? And then we'll do a table on the, on the, on the, on that uh, wall that will have all these characteristics. Now what I want, what I'm, I'm going to be a bit, I'm, this half, I want you to choose a microorganism. So something like a phytoplankton, something like a bacteria. I know you prefer dolphins, but that's not what you were chosen for. And this group is going to go for the large organisms. Because what I want you to appreciate is how maybe the different kind of organism feel a very different environment in terms of and we might not know exactly at this stage of the class, you know, what the bacteria deals with differently than does a dolphin. But okay, so take about two minutes, choose your organism, and then I'm going to poll you and we're going to fill up the, uh, and I'm going to ask you for your name every time you, I mean, I, I might point to you, but just tell me your name. So slowly, slowly, I'll learn all your names by the time I stop teaching you. So yeah, please do it, and, and then we'll, we'll write it. I can put the lights on. And you can talk to your neighbors. It's OK. So. This doesn't write well. Let's see if there's. You can cheat if you want. About the predator, yeah. If you're. Yeah. Then you talk about the. Yeah, no, it's fine. Excellent. No problem. So we have reproduction. What is we have? Oh, we're feeding. And we have. And we'll do small. Do you able to see it? Can you? Do you hear stuff? <laughs> so it's that direction, are they? Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, and I can see if you write clearly. It's for some reason I'm 
Okay. Well, I'll say what I write. Okay, so let's, let's start with those who already have something to tell us. Um, small in reproduction. Guys, small in reproduction. So an organism that's small, so I'm talking about this group, and reproduction. What physical characteristic of the ocean might affect reproduction of a small organism? What? Light intensity. Light intensity. And tell us why. Excellent. This is what I work on. Light in the ocean. So, Light intensity. Okay, let's think about a large organism in reproduction. Now we're going to that group. And tell us your name. Courtney. Courtney. Thank you. It's going to take me a while, but by the end we'll know. Yes? So how would reproduction affect salinity? impact reproduction of large organisms um, it's and large relative to what I mean large I mean you know a few centimeters and bigger well obviously if you take an organism that cannot live in salt water it's not going to survive in, and maybe not it's, but let's think about something more Think about how, so large organisms tend to, when they reproduce, to need a mate. How did they find that mate? What, what might they use that needs, has to do with, it has to do with salinity too, but because salinity affects something in the water very strongly. Yes. Yes, sound. Sound in the ocean is very strongly affected by, so the sound environment your ability to communicate underwater will determine whether or not you can find a mate. And it turns out whales, depending on where they are in the water column, can communicate across whole oceans acoustically. And they, because they communicate the right frequency that propagates and is not attenuated strongly. Salinity causes very strong sound attenuation, particularly at high frequencies. So the frequencies chosen for the marine environment are different than the one in terrestrial organisms. Getting rid of waste product. What do you think? What, what, how, do, how does it happen for a small organism? And your names? I, I forgot you. Grace. Grace and? Oh, Ian. Ian. But now we're talking about waste. Waste, small organism. How does it leave the organism? What, what matters there? What do we call it in chemistry? It's also physics. The way by which molecules get away from somewhere due to vibrations. Come on. Don't tell me you have to. If I put the dye in water, will it stay there or will it start spreading? What causes it to spread? Diffusion. diffusion. And what affects diffusion? Do you think? In terms of physical properties of the water. Do you think it's the same if it's cold and warm? Turns out it's much faster if it's warm. So temperature is important. And if there's turbulence, it's really important in terms of helping diffuse matter in water. How about getting rid of waste for, for large organisms? I mean, they tend to package it. But they tend to package it for a reason. So it sinks. So what matters if something sinks versus it's not sinking? Density of the water. Yeah. And you said diffusion? Your name? Lauren. Lauren. Great. Uh, feeding. Small organism. Yes. Current and upwelling. So upwelling. So they're generally bringing nutrients from depth. But, I mean, you're absolutely right in terms, that's the large scale. When you go to the scale of a bacteria or a, or a flagellate, what? No, for, 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 
Yeah, I mean, you can go back to photosynthesis, and, and but in terms of nutrients, you were, we were talking nutrients. Think about yeah, it's available in upwelling zones, but how do you get there? I mean, you're mostly a, a very small, tiny plankton organism that might divide in, that or in, that, in those waters and divide fast. But what will cause, how would you get the, the molecule to come to you from the water? You, you, so you, you're getting your molecules from around you. You're sending out maybe enzymes. They come back and you, I mean, they, they diffuse back. But what's important is, again, diffusion, because that's the only way by which stuff gets to you. It's the same product, it's same problem just in an opposite direction as getting rid of waste. Does it make sense? You're, you're, you're depleting around you the nutrients that are close, and the only way they can get back to you is through. So this, this affects both. And as we said before, light intensity in, in these cases affects both. Um, large organisms and feeding, what properties? Yes. Biological density. Biological density, but that's not a physical. The oxygen in the water. The oxygen in the water. Okay, that's a chemical property, but yes. Yeah, because many of them breathe. But what? How does it get us to to feeding? You need oxygen. I mean, a fish in an anoxic water is not going to survive. Grant you. But how will it get its food? What is it? need to, what, what physical properties of the water matters? Yeah. So that's your sensor in you, but what physical property in the water do you use? Um, yeah, well, th you hear me. Now, so, yeah, so it's sound, but there's something, there's other sensors as well they use for finding food. What, what for, motion, it might be mechanical, mechanical sensing, so that's, mechanical motion, it's going to be pressure, and we'll talk about it, but what else? You're a visual predator, what do you care about? The, the amount of light, ambient light, as well as the ability of, the fluid to transmit light through it. Turbidity. Turbidity. So if, if there's a lot of the optical properties, optics. Your name? <coughs> and we have Ian there. And finally, avoid being eaten. What can a small organism do to avoid being eaten? I'm not sure I know. Other than what can, I mean, other than what? Really small helps, <laughs> but if your predator is just as big as you are, well, some of them actually have flagella, which means they're able to move. And what will affect their ability to corkscrew around? Viscosity, exactly. And we're going to play in the lab with that. Your name again, Amanda. Amanda. And for large organism. What do you do to avoid being eaten? Chem flush? But what, what do you do in, what, what type of chem flush do you think? You think about, I mean, actually, if I think about something that flushes stuff out, you know, to avoid, what, what would it be? Octopus. Octopus. And so what are they changing? Yeah, but in, in what way? The, the way light transmits. So they're playing with light transmission. They do it in other ways, octopus. Can you, octopi, can you think about what else they do? <coughs> they change their pigmentation completely to the point in which you can't tell them apart from, their, from the substance around, substrate around them. So that's another one in which they, there's a lot of camouflage happening in. Okay, so you got the sense of maybe why we might care about the physical environment when it comes to marine organisms, because often to understand why they're shaped the way they're shaped, the way they look, the way they communicate, we need to know something about the physics of the marine environment. Okay? Okay. 
So some basic concepts we need to get to before we get into physics. One is simple dimension and units, just to be able to communicate about how much there is of a fish, how big it is, how fast it swims. Uh, we need a coordinate system. We need to agree on where in space things are and how do we communicate where they are in space. Uh, we need to discuss something about how well we know what we know. In physics, there's never a quantity that's three and not even three meters a second. There is every, every quantity has some issue of, of how accurate we know it, to what precision. And finally, we tend to use statistics for the simple reason that rather than me giving you all the data I collected about something, I can reduce it to something that's manageable. I can say you, the average swimming speed of a tuna is half a meter a second as opposed to give you all the data that people collected about how fast they swim. You don't need it to, to, for many things. So this is statistics. We tell you something about average, median, things of that nature. Um, as you know, different quantities have different units. And there's not even agreement about units to use. Different people use different units. Different communities of scientists different, use different units. Most of us use what's called the International System, Sistema Internacional, which uh, it was decided by, uh, on agreements, but often it's more convenient because things are order one when we do it, to use things like grams rather than kilogram. It's very convenient to talk about water density as being one gram per centimeter cubed as opposed to a thousand kilogram per meter cubed. So as long as you're able to switch between them, there's no problem. The problem arises when you can't. When people get stuck or they don't report unit, and then uh, mistakes happen. We'll talk about one in a second. So it's really crucial to be consistent in dimensions. That means also when we multiply quantity that all of them use exactly the same dimensions. Uh, and it also helps to highlight dependencies. It turns out that I can predict the, the uh, period of a pendulum simply from the dimensions of that pendulum. It's that easy. I just think about what might affect the motion. There's gravity there. There's the length of the of the of the the line of the pendulum, and I I can even put the mass in of what I have at the end of it. And if I throw all these and ask what will give me dimensions of time, it turns out it's going to be something that's going to go like the square root of length over gravity. And I'm good to within a small factor, I think pi, with what the real period is. So you can get a sense of what things should be simply by thinking physically about the problem. And that's called dimensional analysis. It's a really useful tool, particularly in engineering. Um, in the note, you have a table with dimension. It's in the note for week one. And unit mistake can be very costly. It turns out that NASA had a sensor built, and the engineer, oh, I missed that link. The engineer failed to communicate what they were using. They were 